Hello and welcome to the extended training video for Intel Wireless Docking. My name is Yanni. Today we'll be getting hands-on experience configuring and deploying the technology as well as exploring its many features and requirements. No matter your role in the tech industry, you'll be able to provide value to your customers in any situation involving Intel Wireless Docking. Today I'm joined by Tiffany Kong, a product marketing engineer at Intel and a leading authority on Intel Wireless Docking. Thanks for joining us, Tiffany. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, first off, what is Intel Wireless Docking? Well, it's the new way to dock. Uh, traditionally, a lot of us are accustomed to walking into their desk and manually clicking into their mechanical dock and clicking out. Now, the problem with that is sometimes you end up with broken pins or clips underneath your laptop, and so what happens is, is IT has to come over, give you a new PC, and that can be very costly. Um, it could be time consuming. Sometimes, uh, if you don't even have a mechanical dock, you would have like a VGA um, cable to plug in on the side of your laptop, and that could also end up with like broken pins or frayed cables if you were yanking. Um, cables from your device or your monitor. So Intel wireless docks are essentially as it is. It's as you can see um, on the table there are no wires and that's right. what makes it so fantastic and what we're trying to emphasize um, is that you can go from being mobile walking mm -hmm. to meetings and then immediately coming back to your desk docking and being productive. Fantastic. So Tiffany, who has the most to gain from Intel wireless docking? Well, uh, let me start off. We pulled um, 16 of our top customers and a lot of them had mentioned that they're heavily investing in workplace transformation to attract new talent. So what that means is adopting new technology, changing the workspace environment so it's more of a collaborative work environment, um, it's more of a productive environment. So. That's number one, companies who are adopting workplace transformation. Number two are employees who are looking for those companies that has that new technology. What are the requirements to get all of this up and working? Well, um, you would need a client device with Intel's tri-band wireless card in there. Um, and also, for wireless docking, uh, it supports Intel's fifth gen uh, core platforms as well as Intel's sixth gen core platform. Great, mm -hmm. so you're preparing for the future. Absolutely. and. Uh, what works best for ITs as well too is any future uh, device that is equipped with that tri-band wireless card um, is backwards compatible for any dock that you purchase. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now we're also speaking to our monitor here, correct? Yes. yes. Uh, well, we also have a wireless keyboard or mouse. Um, the docks uh, have multiple ports on it, so think of it as expanding all of your USB peripherals. Right. So we have a lot of USB ports, um, we have VGA, display ports, HDMI ports, um, and even ports for you to connect your headsets or wireless headsets or speakers. So it seems like you could connect all of your devices right here without having to plug and Yes, unplug exactly, multiple. exactly, yes. Um, it can support up to two, uh, two screen monitors mm -hmm. at 1080p and also support 5.1 surround sound as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. So how exactly does the wireless dock work? Is it Bluetooth enabled? No, it's not. Um, it uses Intel's YGIG technology and that is po made possible by that tri-band wireless card that is built into that. All right, device. what is YGIG technology? So YGIG technology is actually similar to Wi-Fi, only that it's the third band. It doesn't transfer data over Wi-Fi um, channels, doesn't transfer data over Bluetooth, it transfers over what we call YGIG. And that is at 60 gigahertz frequency band and much more faster data transfer speeds than Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Right, so it's faster and more secure, correct? Yes. Great. And how many devices did you say you could have uh, connected to the dock at one time? You can only connect, have one device connected to the dock at one time. Okay. But when you're not connected, multiple people can come and use it whenever um, they want to. Um, and that's why I mentioned it's best for these hoteling or travel or workstation environments. Right. Mm -hmm. Great. Can you talk to me about this information that's going back and forth between your device and the dock and how that's secured? Yeah, sure. So we um, use uh, AES 128-bit data encryption to uh, encrypt the data being communicated between the device and the dock. And all of the security practice that practices that are implemented follow under the Wi-Fi Alliance specs. To protect the link, the communication link between the dock and the client, we implement uh, WPA2 personal as the method to secure the link. Great. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm seeing the multiple USB ports on here. Mm -hmm. So you would just plug in a USB um, device into your dock and yes. then mm -hmm. be able to access that information. Yeah, as mm -hmm. you can see, I have a mouse right here. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it scrolling on the screen. I sure can. But uh, one other good thing about it too is that you could connect an external drive and I want to demonstrate uh, playing a movie and show you how you know great the quality is as absolutely well as there's like no de no delay at all I so. was just gonna ask I'm curious <laughs> to see about the lag time okay so let me plug this in here okay into one of your many multiple ports, ports. Mm -hmm. so great it let pops me right up. open this movie here wow that's amazing so I'm gonna be playing a short clip called shooting the tube and let me play this for oh you. Oh my goodness, that popped right up. Can you see that? Absolutely, and it's so clear, that's great. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's so impressive. There was zero lag time. Exactly, popped and I have two monitors, pictures. as you can see here. Wow, I'm it's, so impressed. the same. What type of systems support um, this wireless dock? Well, for Intel wireless docking, um, only Windows is supported at this moment. A Windows 7, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10. Wonderful. So you've got some options there, and I'm sure as it evolves, you'll be able to open up to more platforms. Probably. Absolutely, yeah. Great. I'm really curious. You've got your dock here. Um, what is your distance? How much range do you have before it comes Actually, out? let me just show you. So normally, like when I go to a meeting, I close my lid and I walk okay. away. So right. let me walk a little bit away, and okay. I'll show you how you just tell me it should automatically disconnect keep going did it disconnect it just disconnected okay great so one great feature about wireless docking is that as i come back from my meeting i can come back and put my laptop down and i must it just pop back make on. sure that the way you position your client device is within one to three feet of the dock and um, on the dock itself, all, we have these uh, RF antennas, radio frequency antennas that communicate between the dock and the client device. So those antennas are on the front of the dock, okay. and on the client devices, the antennas are on the front of the top screen. So make sure that when you position your client device at your dock that they're within range. That's great. And mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like you have to be right on top of the dock because as you are walking up, you right. came within range. As you normally yeah, go to work. Yeah, It uses Intel uh, beam forming technology, so it works in direct line of sight of each other. So, Okay. Yeah. So how do we manage all of this technology? Well, actually, it's quite simple. Um, as an IT admin, take the new software updates and push them all out to your devices that have the Intel wireless card or that are compatible with Intel wireless docking. Wow. Can we talk about pairing? Maybe? Yes, absolutely. So when you uh, get your device and you uh, install all of the latest software updates, um, you need to open up the dock manager and I'll show you here. So it will come uh, installed and you need to make sure that the um, Y gig radio antenna is enabled. And again, that's basically the turning on the tri-band wireless card here so it can function. So I could show you here, um, you'll have the dock manager here and a pop up asking you to enable it. Right, so just let a me simple enable button, it. the yep. enable Y gig. Enable Y gig. And so what that does is, if you already set up your dock already um, and have all your peripherals plugged in, by default, the, it will ask you to push the button to manually pair to the dock. So what that does is it, it creates um, these keys to make sure that that profile and that dock you're connecting to is Not actually communicating. communicating together. And that's stored within your client device. Great. So when you come and connect in the future, it will know that that's the dock that you've connected to in the past and that's the settings that you've used. Great. Right. So what are our next steps? Um, so. As I mentioned, uh, there are two types of environments that you know we, we find that some users may use this in. If you're in a more like dedicated cube environment and this is just your dock and nobody else's dock, mm -hmm. I would just recommend to leave the settings as is, uh, just leave it out by default to auto connect. And we'll cover the permission access settings in a moment, but leave it as is, automatically connect. However, if you're an IT admin and you're trying to set up this cool new workspace environment where a lot of people are coming in and out and you have these smaller desk configurations, um, what we've seen uh, some of our customers do and what we recommend is uh, ITs can 
set the permissions on the dock to be either what we call in public mode or shared mode and lock those settings down that so that nobody else can adjust those dock permissions. Great. So if you're switching from one user to the next, do they have to go through a certain set of um, setting requirements in order to be able to access the dock? So every time you connect to a new dock for the first time, you must do a manual pairing. Right. So you again, you open up the dock manager, mm -hmm. um, and depending on which environment you are, let's just say we're in a hotel environment, right? And my IT admin had set it up to be um, the permission to be in shared mode. So what that means is that now when I look at my list of available docks in my dock manager, mm -hmm. I will select the dock that's nearest to me, and that will. Um, you know, if I hadn't paired with it before, it will prompt me to manually tap the button to pair to the dock. Great. I should also talk about the public uh, permission access right. mode. Um, so sometimes if you're in a hotel maybe, like a hotel hotel and right. you want to work in the business center, um, so that mode would require that the user actually have to physically tap the top of the button, uh, uh, the button on the dock to manually pair all the time. Great. That makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. If you're in a busy environment, right. you don't want anybody being Yeah, you want to make sure that okay. that is your dock, mm -hmm. so you push the button on the top and that's yours. That's a great feature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and also in those dense working environments as well, if you tap and hold the button on the top of the dock uh, in, you know, less than in two, three seconds, that will manually disconnect you from the dock and you could just go about your own business wow. and walk away. So I have a Windows 10 device here and I'm going to let you drive this. Really? Yes. Okay. So let me disconnect my other device here and that pretend I'm walking away from this environment. Okay. So now you can use this dock. Great. So I'm going to disconnect here. Okay. And, and then just... I am now disconnected. And I just away. found our Intel wireless dock yes, here. Exactly. And so it says I'm not connected. I need to go to the action center. Mm -hmm. So those are really great prompts. Mm -hmm. You can also swipe to the right here oh. and you'll have a connect button there. And there it goes. It's so connecting. with Windows 10, um, the action center will show you all of your connected devices. So great. So I can just touch yes, on that touch dock. On that. And here it is. Great. That's wonderful. So that's how it looks like in Windows 10. Great. So you're yeah, hearing all those ding, ding, dings. It's mm -hmm. just recognizing all of your peripherals that have been set up great. here. Great. So let me, like, let's pretend um, that we're working. So okay. I already have the, I just have a window file manager open here. Uh, as you can see, I have two screens and I, um, it's in extended mode. So I can that's great. use two screens here. Okay. Let's open up a browser here. Okay. Yes, and of course, by default, it's on intel.com slash ygig. Perfect. <laughs> Intel. That's where you can also learn more information about wireless docking. Great. So, yes, you can take that window and slide it across different monitors as well, too. That's mm -hmm. great. I'm working backwards, so. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, so there it goes over to my right. first monitor. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I'm back. Wonderful. So, Tiffany, it's one of the key features or the purpose of the Y dock. Um, because we're seeing our devices getting smaller and smaller and offering fewer ports. Yes, absolutely. Uh, people love thinner devices and as a result you have to, you know, remove some ports. Right. Uh, the benefit of wireless docking is just think of it as a hub that expands all of your peripherals. So, like I mentioned, you can connect all of your USB peripherals and walk away and then come back and just auto automatically connect to all your peripherals. That's great. Now, Tiffany, we've covered a lot of information. What are some of the other uses that users might find for the dock? Oh, well, absolutely. Intel is also investing in other usages. Uh, so remember I mentioned that tri-band wireless uh, a, a card inside the mm -hmm. client device? So we're looking at usages such as device-to-device -device data transfer. So what that means is that we use it, the Intel's wireless gigabit technology to transfer files between devices. Um, though it also opens up possibilities like uh, integrating the dock within the monitor as well. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Tiffany, for sharing your time and your expertise with us. No problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And thank you, too, for refining your expertise for you and your customers. We'll be back with more Intel videos, but until then, stay up to date with all of this transformative technology at intel.com slash better way to work.